Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord. Good evening to you. Happy Wednesday. Hallelujah. Happy Wednesday to you. How y'all doing this evening? I'm laughing, guys, because I'm like, are we live? Did he just, like, go in and greet? Okay, well, <laughs> hello. <laughs> How y'all doing this evening? Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Well, welcome again to another broadcast of Inspire Life Ministries, where this is Pastor Kofi Bryant Sr., my husband, and for those who don't know me, I'm his wife, Michelle Bryant. Amen. Hallelujah. We hope that you have your Bibles, um, something to write with, yes. so that we can get right into the Word. Amen. Amen. We're going to the New Testament of 2 Peter chapter 1, verses 1 through 3. Again, that's 2 Peter chapter 1, verses 1 through 3, and that is the New Testament. Amen. But before we open, for those, if this is your first time visiting, or listening to this broadcast, wherever you are, we welcome you to Inspire Life Ministries. Welcome. The web address is listed in the chat line. Amen. And so we're going to move forward with prayer and then right into um, our evening, Wednesday night service, Bible study, however you want to categorize it. Amen. Then Amen. we're just growing and learning the word of God together. Hallelujah. For that Hallelujah. Question. Father, we thank you and we praise you, we honor you, we magnify you on this evening, Lord God, another wonderful Walk by Faith Wednesday that you've allowed us to be a part of. Yes. And now I ask, so oh God, that you would open up our ears, Lord God, if there be any deaf ears, Lord God, I ask that they will be open, that we may hear the word of God, yes. that we open up our hearts, that we may receive the word of God. Yes. And for those who are able to see, Lord God, that you allow us to see, Lord God, spiritually, yes. what your word is saying. How does this word help me to grow? How would this word minister to me? How can I like and share this message with someone else? It's in Jesus Christ's name. In Jesus Christ's Amen. Name. Amen. 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 Praise the Lord. Come on and give God a hand clap of praise. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. And so again, we're going to go to 2 Peter chapter 1, verses 1 through 3. Pastor Kofi is going to read from us for us. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And we are using the New King James translation. Amen. Second Peter chapter 2. I'm going to begin reading at verse number 1 in the New King James Version. Therefore, laying aside all malice, all deceit, hypocrisy, envy, and evil speaking, all of it, as newborn babes desire the pure milk of the word, that ye may grow thereby, if ye indeed you, rather, if indeed you have tasted that the Lord is very gracious. Amen. I added the very in there. Amen. You did? I did. <laughs> Amen. And so, if you need a title or the message, um, name it what you want to name it, but I'm going to call it now what? So, on Sunday, Pastor Kofi took us through the word, different scriptures, and I would encourage you that if you're not listening to that, to that message, if you've not seen it, that you would go back and review it. Take your notes. Amen. Amen. And the title of that message was called The Recovery Room. Mm. And so my question is, now that we are out of the recovery room, now what? Mm. What are we going to do? What is it time for us to do? Amen. Amen. And so one of the things that I want to say is that growing closer to God is a lifelong aspiration. And I'm going to say that again, Please. not for y'all, but for me. Amen. Yes. Growing closer to God is a lifelong aspiration. Indeed. It's not that you get saved today, that you accept Jesus Christ, and that you no longer have a need or a desire to grow closer to God. Amen. Amen. So the question is, now that you are out of the recovery room, what's next? Now what? I would venture now to what? say, commit to grow. Amen. When we look at those verses in chapter 2 of, of 1 Peter, chapter 1, amen, verses 1 through 3, one of the words that we see is gal, and I guess it depends on what translation that you use. So what is gal? It's deceitfulness, mm -hmm. Pastor Kofi, okay. amen. Inspire right. Life Ministry, gal is deceitfulness, mm -hmm. amen. And so one of the things that we need to do after coming out of the recovery room, mm -hmm. there's some garments that we had on, amen, that we need to take off. Oh, talk to me. And one of those garments possibly could be, as Paul was talking to us, is what? Taking off the garment of deceit. Mm -hmm. Deceit is when you try to put one over, pull one over 
on another person, amen, that you're trying to put something on that person, amen, mm -hmm. to your own profit and for your own gain, in other words, for your agenda, right. to deceive for your own ends, amen, mm -hmm. to not be honest, not being a forthright person, not being a person of integrity is how you would define de being deceitful. Mm -hmm. When we look at hypocrisy, amen, yeah. it's playing the actor. Going oh through the role of what it is to be a Christian, amen. Oh In other words, being a hypocrite, but it's only a show, amen. See, many times we say that, oh, I'm a Christian, I believe in God, but it's only a show. It isn't reality, amen. It's not the real thing, amen. See, anybody can pretend and, and put on, amen. Mm -hmm. There isn't any substance when we act like hypocrites, amen. It's being a Christian so that you look good in the eyes of people, amen, that you look good in the eyes of the people on your job, in your community, amen, in your church. Maybe it helps, but not really. See, land, being a hypocrite, not only um, does it cause you not to be sincere in your worship with God, amen, it's only a, fa a facade, amen. You may sing hymns at church. You may sit in the church, and, and, and but in reality, you're being a hypocrite, amen, mm. if, this is, if this thing is not pure with you and for, for you, amen. Believers are called to do what? To put it aside, amen. Mm. The next word I want to discuss with us is envy. We need to be taking off the garment of envy. Mm. So what is envy? Excuse me. Envy is wanting what someone else has, Pastor Kofi. Okay, okay. See, Jesus' disciples were envious of one another. Do you all remember when they debated among each other who should have the greatest seat of honor? Mm. Yes. Yes. You want to say something about yeah, it? I have a question. Yeah. Uh, I'd like to pose this question uh, as well to you all who are chatting. Uh, well, I kind of want to pose it knowing the answer. Is there a difference between envy and yeah. admiration? Oh, okay. I thought he was going to say something else. Yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> and I wanted to know, um, and I, I personally think there is. And so I want to highlight something because... Sometimes I know in the which the way I've heard envy used to me, not mm -hmm. maybe to everyone else, but it was when you look upon another's items and you want what they have. Mm -hmm. And so I was looking at that, and so what what did it mean? Did it mean covet what they have? Did it mean just admire? Was it wrong to say, oh, I like that red sweater. I want one of those. Is it saying that? I, I was going to say, I don't think that it's saying admiration mm -hmm. is wrong. So I, I wanted to right. encourage you that if I'm not incorrect in that, and your thoughts as well, that it's okay to admire oh, someone else's property, someone else's, um, but admiration as in, oh, look upon the beauty of that and have a respect for the beauty yes. that it is. That's what I mean by admiration. Oh, wow, that's nice. That looks good on her or that looks good, period. I'd like to have that car. That house, that, but not, oh, I gotta have it. You know, they shouldn't have it and I should have it. Right. I wanted to point out that it may be a difference between the two. Oh, yeah, absolutely. When you think about envy and it's a difference in you admiring something that someone has opposed to you wanting what someone else has because you've allowed envy or jealousy to take root in your heart about that thing. Yes. Amen. Jealousy. And so then the other word is. Slander. So what is slander? Amen. Slander is literally talking about a person or talking down at a person. Amen. Talking about that person behind their back in such a way that you put that person down. Amen. It's also called gossip. Amen. Mm -hmm. And everyone <laughs> or most people believe that gossip is wrong, but mostly at some point in all of our lives, everyone has enjoyed it. Amen. Amen. And when we lend our ear to gossip, amen, yes. we're wrong. We're in error. Amen. You just be, a lot of times people have a tendency to think that, oh, if, if I didn't say anything about that person, but I'm just lending my ear to it, I'm not really, part, I'm not really gossiping, but you're a partaker of it. Even if you've not said anything, but if you're listening to it, amen, and if you don't allow 
the the love of correction to correct that thing, then yeah, you you are gossiping. Amen. Go and ahead. I want to add um, if I tell you something about someone on the line mm -hmm. and you lend your ear to listen to me tell you something about someone on the line if what we're discussing cannot edify Come that on. person Come on, and Austin. or they if they were standing right here you would still say the same thing is that gossip see my point is to make statements in the absence of whom you're making it with, mm. to another person that can't do anything about those statements mm -hmm. might be gossip. Yeah, yeah. Consider that. You might say, well, I didn't say anything bad about the person. She did. I just listened. After that first negative thought comes out from that person's mouth, mm -hmm. you can articulate that they are basically uh, about to give you more information. Your choice could be to further listen or to lend your ear away from that. Right. Yeah. I mean, excuse yourself from the conversation of that person or something like that. But if you do sit and listen and engage, but you don't necessarily say, I suggest that's still gossip. Mm -hmm. I agree. Um, and one of the things that um, I want to encourage us to be very sensitive and careful about is that oftentimes we can... Um, bring something back that was said about somebody. A lot of confusion and division starts that way. And we have to be very careful about what we're saying and what we're repeating. Not only that, my question is that if someone says something about somebody and it doesn't edify that person, it's not edifying, it's not for their spiritual growth, or it's not going to help them grow in their finances, it's not going to help them mature, why is it necessary for me to bring that information back to that person? How is that going to help that person grow? Do we ever think about how easily it is for us to hurt people's feelings? If somebody says something to you and, and you let your ear to it or you were gossiping along with that person about somebody, don't come back and tell the person what the other person said, but yet you don't tell what you said. Let's just stop the gossiping. Amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Come on. I want to hear from you all live chat. Let's let's have an open discussion about this. Amen. Not only that, it doesn't glorify God. Amen. And so when we yearn for the things of God and when we yearn to be in his presence, when we have a passion for Christ, then comes the learning. Amen. You ever been in a place where you, you now that you've accepted Christ and you out of the recovery room and the question is, how can I grow or what's next or now what? That when you have a desire to learn um, to, that you're yearning, that you have a passion for Christ, you want to get closer with him, you want to know more about him, that when we desire to know more about God, guess what? We're going to learn more about him, amen, and we're going to learn, amen, what the benefits that we have, amen, and this again, and you hear it said here, often in Inspired Life, it's about a personal relationship with Christ, amen, so people, you were born again by the word of God, but now you have to grow in respect to your salvation, amen, and that's what this life then becomes. It's one of it's, it's growing in the knowledge of God. Amen. Seeing God increasing as the greatest and highest and as the most excellent treasure in all the world. Amen. Is it too late to learn? Nope. I don't care if you 80 years plus or 54 plus. I plug my age in y'all. <laughs> it's never too late to learn. Amen. No matter how old you are, you can still learn something. Amen. But you have to be open to learn. Amen. You have to be teachable. Amen. And you have to have a desire and be willing to learn. Amen. There are a lot of things that Pastor Kofi and I are learning as it relates to the word of God, as it relates to bettering ourselves, as it relates to pastoring, amen, as it relates to, y'all know, technology, amen, that's my thing, amen. So, I want to say that there is no setback now that you out of that recovery room, amen, now that I'm out, amen, there is no setback that's so severe that you cannot recover in some way, 
but it takes a certain mindset to make that recovery possible. But what is that um, uh, mindset? It's the renewing of the mind, amen? You hear us talk about it, amen? We've had a teaching about it, amen? That the Bible says what? Don't be conformed to the things of this world, but be ye transformed mm -hmm. by the renewing of your mind, right. amen? See, when we let setbacks defeat us, we have to look for the lesson along with the insight inside of ourselves, amen? What are our circumstances, amen? It's challenging, especially when the setback is something you didn't cause, amen? Uh, my, my. Hallelujah. You want to say something about that? But there, watch this, you all. There is wisdom to be found in even in everything, even though the most difficult circumstances, there is wisdom that you can find in that situation. Amen. Now what? We have to commit to grow. Amen. Commit to growth. Amen. When you start looking for a lesson, you set yourself on a personal path. Amen. For what? to grow, for personal growth, amen? amen? I can't grow at the pace that Pastor Kofi grows at. He's not going to grow at the pace that I'm growing at. It depends what your desire is and how you're yearning, amen, to learn and to know more about God, amen? As you learn about your struggles, you will also learn about the people around you, amen? Your team. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Your core group, Amen. You begin to reflect on what you want from life, amen, when you commit to grow and what would it cost for me to get there, amen? Mm -hmm. How much of my time is this going to cost me? Am I disciplined in this area? What amount of energy is it going to take? What commitment am I at? It's going to take honesty, integrity, mm -hmm. faith. Trusting God, amen. Oh Believing God, amen. See, there has to be a commitment to your personal growth. When you say, I'm committed to growth, I'm committed to growing, don't lose drive when life disappoints you. My, my God. My because God. life does get interrupted. And life will disappoint you, amen. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But we have to commit to growth, amen. Yeah. How often? Every day. Each day. Each day. We need to know and understand that our strength is in Christ Jesus. Amen. Yes. Let's not wait when things get um, to their most difficult times to turn to God. Amen. See, a lot of times, I'm not saying y'all, amen, this, this shoe probably don't even fit you. But there have been many times in some of our lives that we called on God during the most difficult times in our life. But when things are going well, are we calling on him then? Amen. Are we acknowledging him? Are we saying, God, you're great and you're greatly to be praised? Are yes. we saying, God, you're Jehovah Jireh, my provider? Are you saying to him, God, you are the lily of the valley? Are you telling him that he's an amazing God? Are you telling him that um, I'm going to continue to trust you in all of my ways? Amen. Are you telling him, you know what, God, I missed the mark, but I repent? Are you telling him, God, I'm doubting? I ask that you forgive me for my doubt. Teach yes. me, show me how to trust you more in this situation. Amen. Yes, Hallelujah. We need to seek God daily. Amen. We have to be diligent in seeking Amen. him. Amen. Yes. And yes. let not let us not return back. Amen. To the recovery room for the same things Come over on, and over pastor. again. Amen. Preach but pastor. if we need to go into the recovery room or mm -hmm. to a recovery on, state man. of being, let it be because we are allowing God to heal us. Amen. Yes. And that what we need is to be healed. Amen. On, it's now. time to grow up. Hmm. Hmm. See, sometimes life is filled with challenges that stretch us. Stretch me, Pastor. Mm. so far that we feel we may never snap back. Amen. Yeah. See, some of you may be struggling to make sense of what your emotions are, Come what on, your thoughts it. are. Bring amen. Bring what it. your place is in life. Amen. You need more than human strength. Amen. Yes. I'm going to say that again. You, you need, need more, more than, than human strength. strength. Amen. Hallelujah. I love Nehemiah 8 10. It says, for the joy of the Lord is my strength. Amen. Yeah. See, God will take your pain. Amen. Away. We have to know who to take the pain too. Amen. Yes. We need to take the pain to God. Amen. See, God knows how to comfort you. Amen. He is omnipotent. He's all-knowing. Amen. He sent his son, Jesus Christ, into a sin-sick world 
to save, to heal, to deliver us from sin. Amen. Yes. But he didn't stop there. When it was time for Jesus to return back, amen, he said, I'm not going to leave you comfortless. But what you going to do, Jesus, I'm going to leave you with the comfort. And who and what might that be? The Holy Spirit. Amen. Hallelujah. Preach See, God right. knows how to comfort you and I. Yes, amen. He, he knows how to bring you through the pain, Pastor Come Kobe. On. Amen. On, and into a better life. See, Come God on. will bring you, amen, through the pain. Amen. If you reach out to him, amen. God is not hiding from you. He's not hiding from me. And so you need to stop hiding from him. My Lord. Amen. My Lord. I want to leave us with four things. And that is number one, be honest. Tell God how you feel. Yes. Amen. Yes. Don't you understand and know and maybe some of us do, and maybe you're saying, well, I'm, I'm new in Christ, and that's okay. Yes. God is available to all of us, amen. Mm -hmm. But we need to be honest with God, amen. Mm -hmm. And we need to tell God how we feel. He already knows, but he just wants to hear it from us. Mm -hmm. And what does that do? It develops a relationship mm -hmm. with God. It develops our communication skills with him. Amen. Amen. See, when we learn to communicate better with God, we'll be able to communicate better with others. Amen. You want to say something, guys? No. Number two, be obedient. Mm. Do what you've been called to do. Amen. See, you ah, thank you, Jesus. You're trying to figure it out. Amen. And you know specifically that you were called to a certain place to do a specific thing, but you don't feel qualified to do it. But if you make yourself available, God will qualify you with what you need. He'll put people near you, around you. He'll send people to you yes. to help you with it. Amen. Hallelujah. No more excuses. Amen. Not only is it our own very lives that's depending on it, our obedience is dependent upon other people being saved also. Why? Because there are a specific person, group of people that God has called you to minister to. How? With your life with the way you live, how you respond when life disappoints you. Somebody is watching you and I. Someone is listening to you and I. Amen. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. Number three, be watchful and know that the Lord is with you. Mm -hmm. Amen. Amen. We cannot forget the promises of God, Pastor Kobe. Amen. And I, this must be one of many of my favorite scriptures. God will not leave you, nor will he forsake you. Amen? Mm. Number four, be worshipful. Praise God with your whole heart. Amen? Don't just give him a portion of it. Amen? When you accepted Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior, amen, you confessed out your own mouth, you believed in your own heart. Amen. Yes. You acknowledged God. You believed and you confessed that Jesus is Lord. Amen. Mm -hmm. And you didn't do that with a partial heart. Amen. My you mind. did that with your whole, whole heart. heart. Amen. And that is the part of us working out our salvation. Amen. Growing in our salvation. Amen. Amen. Is that we do what? That we worship God. That mm -hmm. we're worshipful. Amen. But that we're praising God, hallelujah, with a whole heart, amen. See, this is the time to grow. Let's make the most of the time that God gives us. Let's stop wasting time, amen. See, the one thing you can't recover back, you can't recover time back. Whatever you did, what does it matter now? <laughs> Hallelujah. It's in the past. Amen. Where you currently are in the present and where God is taking you and I in the future. Amen. Is what we need to focus on. Amen. So what are we going to do? We're going to keep our eyes on the prize, with, which is who and what? Christ Jesus. Come on now. And it's Jesus alone. Amen. Hallelujah. Mm -hmm. Glory be to God. Amen. 
At this time, I'm going to turn the rest of this um, service into the hands of Pastor Kofi Bryant. Thank you for being here. Amen. We don't want to assume that anyone is saved. And so we're going to turn this part over to Pastor Kofi. Thank you all. God bless you. Well, now bless the Lord with me and praise God for the message that was pointed, that was sharp, that was rebuking, that was comforting, that was exhorting. Amen. The word of God is so rich and it paid you well this evening. Amen. 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 Type amen if you agree with me. Hallelujah. Well, if you've heard the message, the question is now what? Now that you have left surgery, now that you have entered the recovery room, and now that you have gotten your dismissal instructions, mm. now what? What are you going to do now? Where the preacher of the hour, the Holy Spirit through that preacher gave us four things. Four things to do. Go back and listen to what those four were. Recite them. Lock them in. Put them in your mind and hide them in your heart along with the word. And you will know. Now what is being obedient to God mm, and hallelujah. doing what he called you to do. How he called you to do it. Amen. Amen. Well, I tell you, some people are listening to us, Pastor, and they don't know what we're talking about because they've not done the first step. Amen. And the first step to all of this, finding out who you are, what you need to do, and how you need to do it, is you need to know the Savior. How you need to know you? who gave us the assignments, who blessed us with the gifts, who put you on target to be uh, a blessing to other people, and that is Jesus Christ. So if you don't know him in the pardon of your sins, it's not complicated. Just say this prayer with me, amen? And after you finish repeating after me, guess what? You will be saved and your name will be written in God's Lamb Book of Life where you will be finding eternal life. Amen? Amen. Say this prayer with me. Father, you, Lord, Father, in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus I, ask you I ask you to save my life, save my life. And, become and become Lord of my life, of my life. and fill me and fill full me. of your Holy Spirit your Holy that I might not sin against you, that I might, not that I might be able to do the four steps that were laid out by the preacher. God, I thank you for saving me. In Jesus' name, now what? Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I'm excited. Amen. Whenever we extend, give the invitation to salvation, whether it's on a broadcast, standing at the bus stop, um, in your place of employment, Wherever, amen, that when one person gives their life to Christ, amen, the angels in heaven are rejoicing. Absolutely. And we here on earth should be rejoicing, amen. As well. Why? Because another soul is on Into their way the to kingdom. heaven, amen. Yes. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Y'all know what we say here at Inspire Life Ministries. We thank God for you, amen. Yes, we, we thank you, for you and your families, for being a blessing to yes, us and our yes, family, yes. amen. We love you, we hallelujah. Love you. We love you, we love you. But more importantly, God, God loves, loves you. you. Let's go to the Bible and grow together. And pastor, yes. let's tell them to make certain that if this ministry, if this message has meant anything to you, please like and subscribe and then share this message so someone might get a chance to know what you now know, which is Jesus Christ. Again, we love you and let's grow together. Peace.